amazing runs and possibly more world records. With that, we are ready for the next run. It is Swordsman Kirby and Banana Prince. Swordsman Kirby, take it away. All right. Hey, everyone. I'm um, Sarazen Kirby. I'm going to be running Banana Prince. I'm joined on commentary by uh, with Junkyard Dave. Hey, everybody. All right, so just to be clear, um, I'm the character is a prince of bananas, not a prince that is a banana, <laughs> just to be clear. But all the enemies are going to be uh, veggies, a classic fruits versus veggies battle. All right, so I'm going to get started on time in three, two, one, go. All right, so first things first, you're going to see sort of a unique mechanic in this game, which is the vine mechanic that allows you to pretty much just get like a bigger jump. And the second important mechanic early on is going to be the grandpa. So as you can see, the grandpa is spinning <laughs> around, uh, attacking stuff. And it's going to be really important for uh, a couple later uh, levels down the line. Uh, since this is an 8%, we're just going to be trying to get to the final boss as quickly as possible. And in order to do that, we need to take warps. And warps are generally out of the way, a little bit tricky to get to. Oh, OK, good enough. Um, and we're going to need some vine upgrades and the grandpa as well to get there. Uh, so he's basically looking for like two flowers to drop here uh, to upgrade his vine twice. And that'll come into play like pretty much in the next stage. Yeah. Um, and the currency in this game, uh, rings, they're going to be needed to pay for these warps and also to pay for any weapon upgrades that we do later on. Um, so sometimes uh, I like to joke that this is like basically Sonic because when you do the vine and jump off of it, you do a spinning attack that can damage enemies. You're being followed around by Grandpa, aka Tails, and the currency of the game is uh, rings. <laughs> so we entered the first one. It's actually really important that you have like the double vine there. Um, you can essentially soft lock on the speedrun rope, which is not. Close. And there's actually quite a few soft locks in this game, but we'll get to that. <laughs> this whole game is like probably 40% avoiding soft locks. So. <laughs> um, so a couple random mechanics. The, the slide is like predetermined. Uh, you can slide in a very fixed way or whatever, but you can also like slash to cancel the slide. And the first couple of stages are, well actually I guess the entire road is like routed around uh, collecting those rings. Uh, Kirby's gonna collect 980. Each warp takes 100. And at the very end, he needs to buy a sword. Uh, so that's kind of what he's gonna be doing for the most part. Yeah, somebody. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> the slide yeah. is pretty much exactly, not exactly, but pretty much the length of that platform there. So I unfortunately just fell straight off of it. That's not that big of a deal. So later on, we're going to need some flower upgrades. But there will be some uh, places that we can pick it up. Uh, previously, you might have seen me grab a flower upgrade, uh, the vine upgrade, from a random enemy. Every enemy, uh, if, there are, if, if the game can fit in additional sprites, will drop something. Usually it's just like money or, from what I can tell, like completely, some, sometimes like completely useless item. And then there are also chests that typically drop predetermined items. So this is going to be my last chance to get some guaranteed flower upgrades. And you can upgrade the vine twice, so it gets uh, there's like three different lengths that it can be at. Uh, and for the next warp, as Dave mentioned, the first warp that we did, um, there's a speed run way of doing it that doesn't require vine upgrades, but I got them anyways. This is the second warp, um, doesn't require anything special. But for this one right here, it's uh, required that you have th uh, two vine upgrades. Yeah, and it's required because just the way that the game checks point check points you, sorry, not on this screen, but the upcoming screen. Um, if SK dies on this client, the game is not super great. <laughs> so I mean, I, just... I guess it's a little bit of a challenge in terms of, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. It, well, I guess in the speedrun mode, it's not super great. Um, 
Um, so this next upcoming screen after he climbs up here is probably one of the more dangerous screens in the entire game, at least when it comes to speedrun. Um, so if SK, not yet, he can die freely so far, but if he starts climbing the screen, like it'll, it'll scroll vertically. And if he gets to the top, maybe about like 50% through and ends up dying on the climb, uh, it actually despawns a platform needed to warp. <laughs> so yeah. you're kind of, in the speedrun anyway, like soft locked. So we really don't want a death here. <laughs> like yeah. really, really, really don't want a death here. Oh, um, okay. But luckily also the double vine helps with the climb too, so this yeah. platform in the top right would not spawn if he died anyway. Alright, so we're good. Uh, I have a really ugly backup for that if I were to miss it, so glad we didn't have to do that. Alright, 4-1. Um, there's going to be a little bit of farming for rings. I'm going to be taking a couple of uh, intentional deaths here, so we have some time for uh, a couple of donations if we have any. You got it. We've got plenty. So we've got $10 from Flickster saying hi and thanks for all you do for this foundation. We have $25 from Firestar ZZZ saying great charity project, really enjoying the runs. And Dr. Ox contributes $100 to the Prevent Cancer Foundation saying good RNG and Crade first. And we do still have uh, that bid war going on if you want to see the uh, Crade first or Ridley first routes in uh, Metroid. Yeah, Crade first would be interesting. <laughs> um, so part of Kirby, or sorry, part of Kirby, SK, sorry, dying here is uh, he actually wants to reduce his life count on top of collecting rings, and we'll, it actually feeds into a glitch that's going to happen like right towards the end of the game. So dying there is not only intentional, but at the same time, it's actually quite useful because it'll, it'll factor into a glitch a little bit later on. Yeah, you might have noticed that in the middle of those uh, that farming section right there, uh, I did get a game over. And almost there's like almost no difference between gaming over and dying, but we'll get to that later on, with one exception. Yeah, and this, this tower looks ridiculous. The fastest way to get up it is climbing and jumping like this and attacking. <laughs> The normal way of slowing down and like climbing uh, isn't ideal. And the best part is when you get to the top of this tower, this person we think is a friend, it is a friend, uh, in the non-speedrun route, but in the speedrun route, she just kind of like kicks you off the tower and that's it. And that's it. That's like all you see over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she's not really a friend in the speedrun route, but in the actual game, if you don't warp everywhere, I, I think she like comes back and she's nice. So. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of soft locks, yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, the, the transition on that last screen can sometimes not spawn, so we're, we're kind of like... You want to explain the, the lovely water mechanics here? Oh, yeah. I mean, I can still slide underwater, but swimming is a huge... Like, swimming in real life is easier than swimming in this game, I swear. But one issue, uh, I guess you want to talk a little bit about the hitboxes. It, it, yeah, the, the hitboxes are very misleading. Um, even though SK is like kind of on his belly swimming, they're much more vertical. Um, so you get hit almost like you're standing. And to jump out of water can be like an infinite struggle. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, gotta it, go left. <laughs> In this game, it only uh, the screens only scroll right and up. So if you don't... Uh, immediately go left, then you're kind of locked out of <laughs> entering the secret room here. Yeah, so that's another kind of like speedrun soft lock you want to avoid. Yeah. Health is measured Maybe. in uh, half banana increments. You, <laughs> uh, you start out with three bananas, but the spikes here do, um, oops, do a full banana of damage. So you really don't want to get hit by those. Swimming is just like really hard. Like just swimming upwards just takes so much mashing. <laughs> okay, let's see. It's, it's a great combination of controls. Yeah. Okay. So let's see how long it takes me to get out of the water here. Yeah, I'm a little bit low on health, so I don't want to damage boost myself. Oh. Okay. Only took like a second. But sometimes I just get stuck there for like no reason. <laughs> yeah. I almost. I almost died. That would have been really bad. All right. On to world seven. Uh, I'm just gonna take a death here. Like, whatever. I'm, I'm at half a banana of health. 
might as well just take it out. Like I said, they're not really that, it's not really that costly unless you're trying to warp and the death locks you out of that warp, but... Uh, it's, it's probably the smart thing to do too because this level more than any other level also is kind of a big thing, right? Yeah, like you, it's really easy to get uh, just sort of comboed by enemies. This comboed level, by chili peppers. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get to the chili peppers. Right now, <laughs> these are just uh, pretty harmless green beans. They're they're not that big of a deal. Uh, the chili peppers are where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seven two. This level is just going to be about avoiding chili peppers. Basically, they start attacking uh, as you approach them, or as they spawn on the screen. Whoops. Uh, and basically, you just want to be moving throughout this entire thing. So uh, now would be another good time for a couple donations. Absolutely. We have twenty-five dollars from L saying cancer stinks. I'm donating so that in the future no one will have to go through what I did. Thank you very much, L, for your generosity. We also have $25 from Stryji saying, can't wait for all of the exciting runs this week. All right. So we, Dave mentioned earlier that we need 380 rings to buy the final, buy the weapon that we use for fighting the final boss. We haven't really seen, well, there was like one shop that we saw earlier, but we're going to be accessing the very last shop in the game, which contains like the most powerful, most expensive weapons. Uh, we have enough money to get, I believe, the second most expensive uh, weapon in the game. But before that, I'm going to take another death. Like I said, I want to reduce my life count, and I want to be at one life left going into the final boss. So here's a shop. Buy the right one. And so, what these weapons do is that they'll give you a projectile. So, here is the projectile. It'll be useful for the final boss. So here's the final boss. Uh, this is Bell Pepper King or something like King Bell Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it starts off with a quiz, and you're supposed to answer like eight questions right without missing two. But I'm going to purposely fail this quiz right here. And since I was at one life, this actually causing me a game over, and for whatever reason, that sends you into the final boss, as if you were to finish the quiz normally. Now, normally if you had more than one life left, uh, it would send you back to the previous checkpoint, like the previous place that I spawned, but if you game over, you get sent to the final boss, and this was discovered by uh, Chimp, the current world record holder for Banana Prince. The current Banana Prince. Current Banana King. <laughs> banana King. All right, all right. <laughs> Um, yeah, so on, on this boss, whenever this guy like raises his hands up like that, he actually becomes completely invincible. And if that's not lovely enough, uh, he just does that randomly, and these things that fall are also random. <laughs> so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just all random, and you just have to either sometimes if the attack is long enough, you can like time out when he's going to be vulnerable, but other times you just have to guess. But, okay. Yeah. Time should be coming up soon. He's a real uh, bullet sponge. This projectile helps because we uh, it moves upwards as you fire it. So otherwise, your normal jump slash wouldn't reach. Okay, time's coming up soon. And time. <laughs> GG. Thank you. What was the final time on that? It was 12... Well, still waiting for it to start. 12.55. 12.55. Okay. All right. That's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, play a little bit safe, and uh, I guess there are a couple of unfortunate deaths, so I'm perfectly happy with making it under the estimate. <laughs> yeah, because there's, like, two different spots you can just reset there, so it's kind of scary. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, I just want to give a uh, quick shout out to uh, Chimp and Dwarf, the uh, two other runners of this game. Do you have anything to say about that, Dave? <laughs> this this run has three, literally three people that run it. Like, somebody else run it, please. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah it's it's just Jim Joy for the SK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if, you're, if, if this looks interesting to you, uh, definitely check it out. You know, it's just one of those, um, one of those obscure Famicom games, actually. Uh, next, it's actually kind of, kind of fun. Well, thank you very much, Swordsman Kirby, for that amazing run of Banana Prince. Welcome back, everyone, to Awesome Games Done Quick 2021 online, powered by Twitch. We're getting ready, getting set up for Little Samson with Rayo. That's coming up in just a few minutes. But first, wanted to talk to uh, you about some of the incredible generosity that was coming in during Swordsman Kirby's run including a $500 donation from Delta that says longtime watcher, first time donator. Sadly, my grandfather just passed away from cancer this morning. However, I felt it was only right to send what he left behind to help the fight against cancer. Well wishes and good luck to the runners. Thank you so much, Delta, for that $500 contribution to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. And as we get set up with Rayo and little Samson, we are actually going to go to an interview with the one and only Rayo. Take it away. Hello, everyone. I'm Diesel, and I am here with Rayo, who's going to be running Little Samson coming up soon. Hello, hey, Rayo, and thank you for joining us here. Thank, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm glad you could make it. So uh, Little Samson, let's talk about Little Samson here. Now, this is a game that I don't think a lot of people out there have heard of, or at least not people who are really familiar with speedrunning. So why is that? I think really it's because of the, the release date of the game. It was an extremely late release of the, of, of the NES system. It came out, I believe, like in late 92. So mm -hmm. it came in right, in right in the middle of the NES cycle. So when it finally came out, less people were able to see it because everyone had already moved on to the Super Nintendo system and Genesis. Yeah, it's kind of tough being right at the end of the NES's life cycle to, you know, to try to make a game sell a lot of units. So there's just it's a really expensive game to get now, I assume. Yes, just because of since it was so late, not not enough were act was actually made and released, especially in the United States. So All as right. of right now, I know last I checked, it's close to about sixteen hundred dollars just for an actual cart. Wow. And this is not like some small publisher. This is Capcom, yes? Uh, no. Oh, it's it was, not Capcom. Um, yeah, no. It was that, the game itself was created by, by members who were on the Capcom team for the, for the Mega Man series. Uh -huh. Off the top of my head, for some reason, I can't remember who it is. It might be Taito. Oh, okay. Which published it. But yeah, it, it, was, it wasn't Capcom themselves, but people who worked for them years prior. I see. It's, it certainly feels a little bit like it is inspired by like a Capcom-style game, for sure. Yeah, it is because you're, you're you're when you see the run, you're going to see a lot of references into the game, especially with one boss that looks exactly like Mega Man 2's Dragon Level. Right. <laughs> um. So uh, let's get into the category here. So there's a lot okay. of categories for this game because it, you know, dimensions for difficulty for stages and for out of bounds usage here. Now you're going to be running uh, any percent easy, no out of bounds. What does the no out of bounds mean in this context? In this context, it just means that you can't clip through the wall in an any percent um in the any percent run you have the ability to clip yourself into the wall using uh, the transition between the characters to force yourself into the wall to climb up through the levels causing a glitch in the game allowing you to skip primarily about 50 percent of every level that you can do it in so for this one you're pretty much just going through the level just like any platformer left to right from start to finish so do you prefer the no out of bounds category is is that why you're running this? Yeah, I actually do. I mean, this is actually a newer category that I'm running. I've only been running it for about a few months. Um, I like it because it's any mistakes that happen, it's all on me. With the zips, it's tough because it's all it can all just be input issues. I mean, it's that's also my uh, my problem. But there's a lot of quick movements that have to happen in the run itself. Mm -hmm. With no out of bounds, it's you just have to make the correct jump, um, damage boost through the right enemies, mitigate the amount of health you you take. So it's all just pure platforming. I see. It's kind of simple. It sort of eliminates, um, you know, weird 
<laughs> problems with getting glitches to work and such and kind of adds this dimension of some extra dimensions to the actual level. Right. Hmm. That's neat. Uh, now, also the category says that you're running any percent as opposed to all stages. So how right. are those two things different from each other? Yeah, in the game, there is there is two checks that happen at the end of each level. In one of the levels, if you defeat the first major boss that you fight in the game, which will be the green the green Cyclops, if you beat the boss with anyone other than the mouse on the final hit, you'll be transpo transported to the next actual level. But if mouse does the final hit, the g there was something that was coded in the game to where you skip five levels and go right from level um, five right to level nine. And then there is one other check in the level um, that for some reason the game will check to see if Samson, the main character, has a potion, which you can collect th throughout, the, throughout the game. If you finish that level with a potion on Samson, you skip to the next. You skip to the next level, level to eleven. If he doesn't have a potion, he goes. He you skip two levels, for for some reason. It's a really <laughs> odd thing that they added yeah. into the game. And it's not explained in the in the game at all. It's just you yeah. Have it's to not been anywhere. Huh. I mean, for me personally, it's nice because you skip the hardest level yeah. in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, well, uh, you talked a little bit about the, the characters there. Uh, I know mm -hmm. in this game, you can switch between the characters. You've got Samson, the dragon, the golem, and the mouse, right? right. So are you going to use all of these characters, and how much? Uh, primarily the entire run outside of the intro stages where you're forced to play the characters, it's all going to be KO the mouse. Mm -hmm. um, the dragon, you're, you're never going to see again. The golem, you might see once if something goes wrong on the dragon level. And Samson, you can you won't see except for the beginning of every stage because the game forces you to start with Samson. So other than that, this game is all the mouse. Why is the mouse so powerful? Um for one, he's the fastest character in the game, as that well as sense. his attacks, which he's he's able to throw three bombs out um at a time. The bomb itself isn't that powerful. It only does one HP of damage each time it makes contact with an enemy. What makes him the strongest is the explosion from the bomb. The bomb itself can do, can do a max of 10 damage through the entire explosion. So it's mm -hmm. one damage per frame. So that's pretty much what I'm trying to do against all the bosses is have the bomb explode just before the boss makes contact with them, um, finishing them off very quickly. So what's the downside to the mouse then? Why not just everyone yeah. plays with it? Very low health. When you start the game off, he starts with two health the entire the, the um, start of the level. But the good thing about the game is that throughout each level, there are these there are health power ups that will give you two extra health every time you pick one up. But there is a max. So with the mount with for the mouse, you're only getting you're only given ten HP total for the entire game once you reach that max, which is still good. But for most bosses, most bosses will do eight hits of damage every time you make contact to them. So essentially, it's just two hits and you're dead. All right. What would you say is the most challenging part about the run? Is it that health management? Uh, for, th for this run, it's definitely, in some levels, it's definitely the health management. Because in the zip version, you can skip most of the enemies and go right to the boss at full health. And no out of bounds, you're going to have to fight these enemies. And some of them are all, always going to be in the way. So you have to... Know the route, know which enemies to take the damage when knowing that there's a health pickup eventually along the way. And then also just not hitting the boss. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine that's a, it's got to be quite a challenge, I bet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when you're starting with that little health, it's probably got to be the toughest thing, especially in marathon run. Um, but uh, that's all the time we have. And I want to thank you very much uh, for talking with us today. Excellent. It was, it was, it was great to be here. It was great to be on at GDQ once again. Cool. Well, good luck on the run. Oh, thank you. Hope, and hope, to, get, hope can, to get people to show. Yeah, hopefully it goes well. I'm looking forward to watching it. <laughs> um, but that run is going to be coming up next. Uh, Ray EO is going to be running Little Samson, any percent easy, no out of bounds. Stick around. Well, we still had a little bit of love coming in for Banana Prince via the donations. Mark W. donated $100 to the Prevent Cancer Foundation, saying as a vegan, I had to donate during Banana Prince. And Iron Oxide 1527 contributes $250 to the Prevent Cancer Foundation, saying keep up the great work, runners. Enjoy watching all of the GDQ content. and.